We've got the Barbarian Path of the Beast. The Path of the Beast. This, this, this illustrates what I was just saying really perfectly. I can imagine there being a whole lot of Path of the Beast barbarians among uh, roving uh, lycanthrope clans and so forth. Yeah, like I think this is kind of like almost the opposite of the wild magic. Um, like maybe there's only one person that's been exposed to this much uh, magical radiation, but the Path mm-hmm. of the Beast is like a whole town. Yeah. Maybe an entire, you know... Uh, country Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. that that have these people as their main fighting force Mm -hmm. so the path of the beast is really for you if you like lycanthropy Mm. if you like wolverine (laughs) if you like being a werewolf if you like turning into anything and becoming more bestial and scary uh this is really the barbarian for you yeah Uh, such a barbarian will be inhabited by a primal spirit or be descended from shapeshifters you can choose your origin or and uh, determine your feral might, or determine that you can d- decide this, or you can roll on this table as well as to mm-hmm. like how this all came about for you. I do like the fact that you can roll, especially mm-hmm. with new players, um, and just be kind of delighted and surprised by how you ended up like this barbarian. I quite like the four sample options they put here. One is the lycanthrope, which we you know we talked about. That's fairly straightforward. Very but straightforward. The descendant of an arch druid, and yeah. you've learned how to change shape from their powerful bloodline. That's cool. That's a cool. spirit gave you a gift. You'll notice there's actually kind of a lot of fey magic going on in this book. There is uh, quite a lot of fey energy in this. Yeah. Um, and then an ancient animal spirit dwells within you that kind of expresses itself through your body. I think these are all very cool sort of baseline character conceits. They're, they're like superhero origin stories here that you can build your character out of. Yeah, very much so. And and that's and, and the, and the class and the subclass really gets going at form of the beast. At third level, when you enter your rage, you transform, revealing your bestial power within you. Until that rage ends, you manifest natural weapons. It counts as a simple melee weapon for you, and you add your strength modifier to your attack and damage rolls when you attack with it as normal. You choose the weapon's form each time you rage. You only get one of these, not both, not all. Uh, Bite. Your mouth transforms into a bestial muzzle or a great mandibles that freaks me out the most um <laughs> things Bug i can barbarian. understand <laughs> insect mandibles freak me out like being a were ant is kind of weird um it deals 1d8 piercing damage on a hit on each of your turns when you damage a creature with this bite you regain hit points equal to your proficiency bonus provided that you have less than half of your hit points when you hit this has been a little bit nerfed um from ua but it makes a lot of sense it's also terrifying that you have a barbarian now that is effectively eating eating the enemy and getting health back Mm -hmm. Uh, very scary stuff Uh, i think it's interesting that they choose to uh restore real hit points instead of granting a temporary hit point buff like the wild soul does yeah i i agree I i think that's um i think it makes i think it makes more sense for this attack Mm hmm yeah mm-hmm. so claws each of your hands transform into a claw which you can use as a weapon if it's em- if that hand is empty it deals 1d6 slashing damage on a hit once on each of your turns when you attack with your claw attack uh, and you take the attack action you can make one additional claw attack as part of the same action not bonus action action so if you've got two attacks one two you can make a third um couldn't you not make a bonus action to make a fourth this is an interesting um kind of sliver of the rules and i think no because two weapon fighting requires you to be using uh, light weapons in order to fight with them uh but this is actually a really interesting case where a barbarian could take the dual wielder feat from the player's handbook right which removes that light weapon restriction and lets them, uh, you know, fight fairly with both hands uh, as a bonus action attack. That actually works really well for the armor artificer also with their uh, dual thunder gauntlets. And it gets you a nice plus one to AC uh, while you're dual wielding too. I, I feel like a little bit these subclasses and Tasha's have been constructed with feats in mind mm-hmm. and vice versa. It's um, nice to see the feats, even though they're an optional rule, do seem to be clicking into sort of the the core of the game a little bit better with some of these new classes. Yeah. Um, 
you still don't need them to be effective, but it does uh, it does reward people who like to use feats in interesting ways. Yeah, but if you want to be the claw guy and get those four claw attacks per turn while while you're raging, yeah, um, <laughs> we can make that happen. Yeah, so you're you're like almost like a barbarian monk at this point. Uh, then we've got the tail. You grow a lashing spiny t- spiny tail, which deals one d eight piercing damage on a hit, and also has the reach property. If a creature can see, if you can see a creature within 10 feet of you, uh, wait, wait, wait. If a creature you can see within 10 feet of you hits with an attack roll, you can use your reaction to swipe your tail and roll a 1d8, applying a bonus to your AC, that's new, um, to the number rolled, potentially causing the attack to miss you. Very interesting. So we have kind of three sort of barbarian style builds that you can apply on the fly the bite is kind of a right. restorative healing build the claws are an offensive build and the tail is a more defensive build i think that's that's very cool that it gives you these options to change up your fighting style yeah. uh on the fly combat by combat rage by rage uh, to suit the situation you're in at the time it, th- that increasing your ac bonus um it's very evocative of like Nightcrawler, right? Mm. X Men, you know, mm. tail wrapping around a gun and disarming somebody. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 I think that's it. a great thing to say that your beast barbarian can do. Make that tail prehensile. Yeah. Make it prehensile. Let it grab <laughs> stuff. <laughs> uh, walk me through bestial soul. Yes, bestial soul, a sixth level feature. Um, the feral power within you increases, causing the natural weapons of your form of the beast to count as magical for the purpose of overcoming resistance and immunity to non-magical attacks and damage. This is uh, good, but fairly standard. The monk gets this exact same thing, uh, actually at the exact same level. So this feels good. You're an unarmed fighter. You're just as good as the other unarmed fighter. Um, You also can alter your form to help you adapt to your surroundings. When you finish a short or long rest, you can choose one of the following benefits, which lasts until the end of your next short or long rest. And there's three of them. The first is climbing. You gain a climbing speed equal to your walking speed, and you can climb difficult surfaces, including upside down on ceilings, without needing to make an ability check. We were just talking about Nightcrawler, right? <laughs> or, or the alien. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so creepy. Yeah. I don't want to look up and see a barbarian on the ceiling. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> so... And then Continue. he's up on the ceiling, the tail just reaches down. And yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Um, there's a jumping trait. When you jump, you can make a strength athletics check to extend your jump by the number of feet equal to the check's total. Uh, you can do this only once per turn. Pretty nice. Uh, people always want to make athletics checks to jump because, you know, in D&D, when you do something, you make a check. Yeah. Uh, but really, uh, jumping is a more static thing than that. It's equal to, uh, it, it's based upon your strength ability yeah. score one of the few things that keys off the score uh so being able to actually indulge in rolling an athletics check which you're good at which you have advantage on while you're raging uh just feels nice if you're playing a barbarian um and finally there's swimming this one is nice and straightforward you get a swimming speed equal to your walking speed and you can breathe underwater great uh very useful for certain campaigns uh salt marsh in particular anything that uh Certain parts of Waterdeep Dragon Heist, like when you're going underwater to, um, well, I won't spoil that bit. Um, But uh, all of these abilities, while they're fairly situational, the fact that you can change them up uh, after any short rest you take uh, still keeps an element of flexibility while uh, making you have to commit just a little bit also. Yeah, we saw this in the Artificer Armor, again, making this this choice for yourself of what kind, being very adaptive to your Mm. situation if you want to be. I think that's a real strength of the subclasses in Tasha's uh, is that they offer you a great deal of variety, even within the subclass. Uh, Because like not every Path of the Beast variant is going to be exactly the same, right? This is one that we talked about probably being a more common subclass in world. If every Path of the Beast variant looked the same, it would be like, that doesn't seem very realistic. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, at 10th level, we have Infectious Fury, which is something I adore and love. When you hit a creature with your natural weapons while you're raging, the beast within you can curse your target. So we're really doubling down this concept of lycanthropy. Mm. So your cursed target uh, is infected with a rabid fury. The target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw is hilarious if you're fighting other 
barbarians. <laughs> um, the DC is uh, con- your, you know eight plus your Constitution modifier plus your your proficiency bonus, or they suf- suffer one of the following effects. Your choice: the target must use its reaction to make a melee attack against another creature of your choice that you can see. This is hilarious to me. Um, <laughs> Like, you attack someone and they're just infected and they attack their own friend. I love abilities like that. Yeah. Um, or the target takes just 2d12 psychic damage. This makes it so if you're only going against one particular target uh, and, or no one's near it, you know, it, it doesn't go wasted. Right. I think right. this is another thing we see in Tasha's is not wasting your abilities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and again you can do this as many times as you want to up to your proficiency bonus uh you get this all back after a long rest i think this yeah. is really fun this is very fun there's a couple of like little mechanical details here that i think are very interesting um the first is a wisdom saving throw when it talks about rabid fury you know i think about like uh you know they're infected by rabies now and it makes you think it's like a constitution save but the kind of creatures that you want to hit with an ability like this are big bruisers and they tend mm-hmm. to have a really good constitution save. So making this into a magical effect that affects their mind and their will and t- t- keys into wisdom is a really good choice from a mechanical perspective. Well, and you know, you're the barbarian, you're, you're front and center. So whoever you hit with your natural weapon is probably pretty tough too. Yeah, you want to be tanking the biggest guys on the field. And this gives you a great way to uh, turn their power against their enemies. Well, I mean, what's happening if you're fighting at like, you know, a, a young dragon <laughs> and it fails it. And then it, you're like, no, attack, attack that over there. <laughs> <laughs> the, I mean, the, the real trick with this first ability that it has to make a reaction to uh, make a yeah. melee attack against another creature. It does come with a pretty severe caveat. And that's that it can't move before it does that right it immediately does it so if you're not next to anyone this is something we see with crown of madness also (laughs) the the spell from the player's handbook right um is that it it, it becomes difficult to use abilities like this if you're not in an absolute cluster of a melee combat um so like you said earlier the fact that you can also just turn into straight up extra damage against the target is pretty nice also yeah yeah it's it's kind (laughs) it's 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 kind game design so tell me about call of the hunt call the hunt Mm. this is the 14th level uh subclass capstone of the path of the beast the beast within you grows so powerful that you can spread its ferocity to others and gain resilience from them joining your hunt when you enter your rage, you can choose a number of other willing creatures. You can see within 30 feet of you equal to your constitution modifier, minimum of one. I do want to point out here that uh, the 20th level Bavarian capstone uh, shoots your constitution above 20, up to 24, I think, which allows you to really even get more use out of this feature than any other mortal being possibly could. Um, you, first of all, gave, gain five temporary hit points for every creature that accepts your, your blessing. And until your rage ends, the chosen creatures can each use the following benefit once on each of their turns. When they hit a target with an attack roll and deal damage, the creature can add a d6 to the damage that they rolled. It's nothing flashy, it's nothing fancy, but it's a nice little damage buff to all of the attackers in your party. And you can use this feature a number of times equal to proficiency bonus and regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. So the thing of this feature is not that it's a, a huge boost to, uh, that you only give once. It's a lesser boost that is spread out a- across the entire adventuring day. Yeah. And uh, I, again, this is all about party cohesion. Again, it's it's helping mm-hmm. your party. I, 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 I don't know that we've seen a subclass yet that doesn't benefit the party yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it really leans into uh, everything in this book really leans into that uh, team player mentality i i I think this feature uh, a lot of people may look at it and see that uh, and just think i mean it's not it's not that splashy it's not impactful Mm. but uh the if, if you look at the raw amount of damage that you're able to put out with this feature giving every single member of your party an extra d6 of damage basically as long as you're raging it's probably the entire encounter um, it's uh, effectively a broader application of something like, I don't know, 20 D6 extra damage if the combat goes on for like 
for three or four rounds, which if you saw this feature and it said, your next attack deals plus 20 D6 damage, you'd be like, whoa, that's incredible. <laughs> uh, but this is just as effective as that uh, in a different way, in a way that doesn't look quite as over overwhelming. Tasha's Cauldron of Everything is available now on D&D Beyond. Purchase before January 5th to unlock the Cauldron die set, as well as character sheet backdrops, themes and frames.